They want to get started right at one o'clock. Uh, yeah. Uh, did he tell you? I, I heard. Yeah. So. Is it one o'clock? It's a couple Almost minutes before. Nice crowd. I mean, fr yeah. friendly. I hope. <laughs> I hope. <laughs> How's the nerves? Pardon? How's the nerves? Shot. <laughs> Yeah, hopefully. <laughs> yeah, uh, Chrissy's supposed to say something first. It's ready to go. Okay. They want to get started right at. I know the handicapped people that.
Dr. Jake's home contains an array of Native American treasures. The most spectacular is a headdress that was gifted to him by the Standing Rock Sioux tribe. He welcomes you to his home to see all these interesting artifacts. It has been my privilege to work with Doc Jake on this presentation. I hope you learn, enjoy learning about the details of Lakota life from this fascinating collection. Take it away, Dr. Jake. Thank you, thank you, Christy and Bonnie. Uh, I think I'm all tied up here someplace. The uh, ledger art that I'm presenting is uh, something that was passed down from my uh, great aunt. And my great aunt was uh, Mary C. Collins. Uh, she was a congregational missionary on the Standing Rock Reservation from uh, 1885 to 1910. My uh, grandmother, uh, who inherited uh, much of her uh, material when, she when uh, Mary Collins died, and I'm gonna go by her Indian name. Uh, the Indians named her Winona, rather than calling her Mary Collins. Uh, but when Winona died, uh, things were passed to my grandmother and a lot of the material was then donated to the Heritage Center and uh, Pier. But some of it was still passed down uh, to my father, and then when he passed away, uh, I inherited it. My grandmother was a teacher during the same time, but only for three years on the reservation. She taught at the day school uh, at uh, Running Antelopes Village. The, this is... Uh, my uh, great aunt, younger years and uh, before retirement. And she uh, went to uh, Running Antelopes Village from uh, the Oahe Mission, which was just north of Pier. The Oahe Chapel is the uh, one uh, shown here. This was uh, her first uh, mission, and she uh, went from uh, this mission up to uh, Running Antelopes Village. Uh, this uh, church is still uh, preserved. It's on the uh, east end of the Oahe Dam now. And uh, uh, there's a, a nice story about it uh, posted there too. This was her uh, house at Running Antelopes Village. Now, Running Antelopes Village was renamed Little Eagle in South Dakota after uh, Little Eagle, who was killed during the arrest of Sitting Bull. Uh, he, he uh, this is uh, her traveling on her buckboard between uh, Fort Yates and Little Eagle. She uh, won the uh, trust of the natives uh, very quickly because uh, she spoke fluent uh, Lakota. She uh, knew the important uh, uh, leaders. She knew Sitting Bull, she knew Gaul. Can we turn off those lights? They're right in my eyes. But uh, she knew Sitting Bull. Uh, there's an interesting story about him. And uh, I won't uh, tell that one at this point. But uh, she uh, knew Gaul. Uh, she knew Running Antelope. Uh, she knew John Grass. Uh, all of them quite well. Uh, at times, she was in charge of passing out commodities. And at that time, she would tear a page uh, out of a ledger book and have somebody draw her a picture. Uh, at other times, she re requested certain uh, individuals to draw for, for her. A lot of the pictures uh, that you'll see today are still down in Pier, the originals, and uh, the Pier was kind enough to make copies for me, and they're, they'll be shown today. The other ones, I have the originals on my wall at home. Uh, 
while at uh, Little Eagle uh, or Running Animals Village, uh, she was not just teaching the gospel. She was uh, a medicine woman. She was uh, uh, she performed weddings and funerals. Uh, she taught school. Uh, she she uh, did baptisms also. And uh, as a sideline, uh, when I was uh, at Fort Yates, uh, I spent three years at, at the Indian Hospital there before coming to uh, Hedinger. Uh, she, uh, I took care of an elderly gentleman in his 80s, and uh, I asked him if he had ever heard of Winona, and he just smiled up at me and said, she baptized me. So I thought that's kind of cool. Some can't hear you. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, art of any kind uh, is uh, has been passed down and started probably after the first grunt of the cavemen uh, started drawing on uh, rocks, uh, the petroglyphs on the rocks, and finally the uh, cave walls and. Uh, in the, uh, I can't find my little pointer, the cave walls in southern France, and, and then uh, this one too, <laughs> found in southern France. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, the ledger art uh, actually started probably around 1850 with the uh, uh, paper coming into the uh, Midwest here, or the Plains area. And uh, really started uh, most often considered around 1880 to 1930. And it was actually in ledgers. Uh, they, they would, some of them were intact ledgers, others. Can somebody t take off that one too? Can somebody t turn that light too? The uh, ledgers uh, often showed uh, the individual counting coup, uh, stealing horses, courting, and most of these were done by the males. Uh, the women uh, would uh, do most of the beadwork and porcupine quills and things. the uh, Cheyenne Indians and uh, the Lakotas. And the Cheyennes were the, probably the most prolific uh, ledger art. The uh, men would often uh, try and obtain the ledger books uh, uh, and they considered them their war books. The uh, Thank you. A little bit more. Down. Yeah. The uh, ledger books were uh, very prized because they, they were so portable. Whereas uh, if they tried to keep their uh, stories on the hides, these were often destroyed when the military destroyed the camps. When, the ledger books were more portable and probably more durable than uh, the buffalo hides. The artists used uh, colored pencils, crayons, uh, India ink, uh, sometimes uh, minerals uh, from the, the earth uh, for certain colors. And when they did uh, show a, a ledger book, they, they usually started at the back and worked forward. And the action was almost always from the right to the left. And uh, the bottom of, or the binding was where the bottom of the picture was. Uh, the collection that I have, 18, 19 uh, pictures drawn by uh, a fellow by the name of Oak. Uh, 
his fight. And uh, they often went by double names, and uh, another name is Chihupa, which is Jaws. Uh, he, he was uh, Ankh Papa Sue, and uh, he uh, was quite an artist. Uh, he has a, a lot of, I have 18 or 20 of his prints, but there are a lot, apparently a lot of them scattered around the country too. Start off with just a picture showing uh, a typical dress of the uh, natives. Uh, the, uh, a male is in between the two women. Uh, the women have uh, extensions uh, uh, down the hair in, in addition to uh, long earrings. Uh, this one has a uh, probably uh, uh, porcupine quill uh, belt on it, uh, or belt that's decorated with porcupine quills, and this one is probably more of a beaded one. Uh, the male has a, a long feathered uh, attachment, and he has a choker and a breastplate uh, of either bone or uh, shells. Courting was uh, one of the things that the men often uh, drew. Uh, this just shows uh, three men walking out from a, a teepee, apparently. Uh, it looks like they're in the snow, a lot of tracks. Uh, these two are, are men that are talking to the women. They're wrapped in their blankets. And here are uh, two men that have wrapped a woman around the a blanket and uh, she has to decide which one that she's going to uh, go with. So, this is a, an interesting one. This is a fellow that's courting on a mule. As you can see, the long ears. Uh, he's very finely dressed. He's got a choker, he's got a breastplate, and he's holding a, a bundle of uh, parent flowers. Uh, this fellow is trying to uh, woo her into his blanket, so uh, we don't know what the final uh, solution of that is. But uh, this fellow and uh, oh, this fellow apparently are the same. The blanket is the same anyway. He's holding on to the reins of a woman, and uh, she's dressed very fine, a uh, nice saddle blanket with the uh, feathers. Uh, she's got the uh, long earrings. These are probably uh, small shells. Uh, nice paint horse. And uh, his horse has a feather bundle uh, at the base of the mane. Many times when uh, they were uh, trying to uh, obtain a bride, they would uh, give a gift horse to the uh, uh, father of the uh, daughter that they were trying to uh, purchase. And this uh, appears to be a, a gift horse. Uh, he's very finely dressed. He's not dressed for war. He's, he has a uh, breastplate on of uh, probably shells. His horse's mane is cropped uh, quite close, and uh, he has a eagle foot uh, dangling from his neck. Uh, significance of this, uh, I, I don't know. This this is a unique picture. Uh, it, it's uh, uh, certainly. Uh, different than any of the other ones. This is a spider web, and uh, Iktomi is a spider. Uh, he was also a trickster and played practical jokes. But uh, they, they thought quite highly of a spider because the web withstood the, the uh, strong storms. After a storm, there's always a spider web there, and it catches everything that goes through. Uh, Many of you have seen the uh, uh, um, dream catchers that are 
hanging from the, a lot of bedroom uh, ceilings, kids. And the dream catcher is a spider web and has an opening in the center of it where the good dreams go through and the bad dreams are caught in the spider web. So if a uh, fellow was going to uh, uh, combat, uh, he would often decorate his horse with a spider or spider web and that uh, would give him the horse strength and uh, him strength. These are just uh, pictures of uh, fellows on horseback, and not, nece not necessarily in a battle or anything, but they were drawn by a fellow called Omaha Teepee. Uh, the, f the horse has a face mask on it. Uh, he has a uh, headdress that is uh, similar to those worn by different societies in the tribe. He has a long sash and it doesn't look like it was finished because these feathers don't attach to anything. But if he was a sash wearer in society, that meant that he, when he went into combat, he would put a latch through the sash and he was there until he was either killed or he won the battle. He is holding a is a bow and then there, if you can see there's a, a little uh, point on the end of it, a spear point. So it was a lance and a bow at the same time. Uh, he's holding a rifle in the other hand and this is a scalp coming off the uh, bridle of the uh, uh, horse and, and that meant that the horse had trampled an enemy in battle. The uh, crescent moon here and, and here uh, it was a, sim a symbol of strength. And the uh, deer hoofs or antelope hoof prints uh, is a symbol of speed uh, for the uh, horse. And the uh, rider <laughs> has a military type of uh, cap on it. He has a, a, a bow and a quiver. But in the other hand, he has a stick or, or a straight coup stick. Uh, I think uh, I'll go back over to this one uh, to uh, meant to show. Uh, I think the, this one on the uh, has uh, notched ears. Uh, it does not have the notched ears, but it has a. Uh, face mask also on it and uh, the Spanish influence uh, is this structure here called jangles. Uh, apparently the Spanish uh, had something similar to this and has passed uh, on up to, uh, from the uh, southern uh, states. Again the, the uh, crescent moon, the foot pr uh, hoof prints of the deer or antelope. Uh, this is just a, some of the artists were very good and some were not so good. Uh, this fellow has a buffalo horn headdress in, in addition to a long headdress which is indicated that he was a brave individual and had uh, lots of uh, points. He has a uh, banner type of a uh, uh, What's a good term? Anyway, he's got holding a banner, and then these are little streamers coming off of it, and these are little uh, uh, tin cones that were attached to the end of the streamers. Another one by Omaha Tipi uh, shows a face mask on the horse, notched ears, uh, buffalo uh, horn headdress. Here's a shield with a half moon and a, a straight coup stick again with a small cone, uh, cone on it, a, cre a crescent moon on his uh, withers. Another one, a watercolor uh, done uh, showing a, a society type of headdress, 
a, a feather bundle on the forelock of the horse, and, and his, the horse tail all decorated with feathers. This is probably more of a, a ceremonial type of a of a uh, display. But yet, uh, a lot of the pictures that uh, I have uh, show crows uh, in, in a good light. Uh, these are crows because of the pompadour, on, uh, you can see it on, on their hair. Uh, they all have uh, hair with them. They're talking to each other about something. Uh, he has a rifle scabbard in his uh, hand. And he's sitting on a uh, saddle blanket of a, uh, looks like a mountain lion. I think it's fascinating once you start looking at the detail on these. Here's two crow uh, uh, warriors that are dressed in a lot of finery. They have uh, necklaces, probably uh, either beads or uh, uh, shells. Uh, hair extensions. Uh, so, hair uh, the feather bundle at the uh, base of the uh, tail, and the tail is wrapped up in uh, red ribbon, which is very common, especially when they were going into battle. And here's a feather bundle on the uh, forelock, and then the jangles underneath the, the bridles. This is a very nice picture, I think. This is a little different one. Uh, shows a pen and ink. Uh, right, uh, the horse is eating or drinking, and uh, he's got jangles there. The uh, and I'm not sure what what that. that at first, I thought it was a saber, but I, I don't think so. This one has a face mask with a lot of silver discs around it. Uh, the warrior is holding a feather uh, fan in one hand. He's got the reins in the other hand. And I don't know how he's holding the umbrella. He must have a third hand someplace. The uh, discs here are, are probably uh, porcupine uh, decorations. Uh, and uh, probably a society because uh, both the shields are, are uh, showing uh, turtle uh, effigies. Both of them have uh, straight coup sticks. Uh, um, th this one is wearing a hoodie, which is uh, fairly common apparently. Getting to some of the ceremonies, uh, this is one that was done for her at her request. Uh, uh, this is called the uh, grass dance, and uh, it celebrated the uh, the grass which fed the buffalo, which fed them. The uh, a lot of action in this one. They have five drummers here. Uh, you have a warrior with a long headdress and holding a saber for some reason. This fellow has got a bustle, uh, a roach on the head, and he's got a uh, head knocker for uh, or a tomahawk, I guess. Uh, this one's got a bow and arrow and a bustle. The, this one's got a bustle and a head roach. Uh, he, he's got a fan uh, rope headdress. Uh, this one's carrying a rifle. Uh, this one's car uh, carrying a rifle, and he's got a society type headdress. But a lot of, a lot of action in this one. Um, I don't know how to get this one started. Um, just skip that one. Hmm? You can just. Skip no, oh, skip that one, okay. 
Oh, yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Advances now. Huh? Hmm. Help. <laughs> there we go. Th this one is a, a beautiful one. Uh, this is the Sundance. It was a very sacred ceremony. They would uh, pick out a long, a tall uh, cottonwood tree. They would uh, have a ceremony blessing it. Uh, and then uh, once they cut it down, they would carry it to a, a specific place and uh, set it up. And they would have uh, tethers ha hanging from it, uh, which they would uh, tie to the, uh, the skin of uh, a dancer who is, is uh, there's a tether here and is attached to the uh, chest of, of this dancer and uh, they would uh, dance until uh, they tore through the skin and the uh, fellow collapsed and all the time he was blowing a uh, eagle bone whistle and looking up at the sun these are all different societies they're wearing different uh, clothing they're wearing different uh, society headdresses but it's a very uh, important uh, ceremony for the uh, Lakota and, and a lot of the Plains uh, tribes. These are uh, people that are probably waiting to get in to do their dance. Only a few uh, individuals were selected to do the, uh, the dance where they were, had the piercing done. This is a night dance, and this was the only dance that the women w could partake with the men in. Uh, feather fans, two of them. Uh, a lot of the uh, metal discs, uh, silver discs. Uh, apparently, uh, they got these from the traders uh, who, in turn, got them from uh, Germany. They were qu quite uh, thought of. Uh, this is a, another dance of some kind. He's got a bustle. He's got the silver disc necklace and, and the roach headdress, uh, often made out of porcupine or uh, white-tailed deer tails, uh, things of this sort. I'm not sure what the stick is. Uh, it's not a pipe. It's not a uh, acoustic. Uh, it, it's a stick of some kind. And it's not a horse stick either. Uh, and just some more dancers. The artist is not too, not the best artist. Uh, you can see the, the hands, the fingers. Uh, the buffalo were, were very sacred to the tribes. Uh, it was their form of survival. Uh, they used almost every part of the buffalo, uh, the, the horns uh, for uh, utensils and uh, the, uh, the hide for uh, clothing and uh, shelter, the uh, meat, obviously, for uh, 
sustenance, uh, the stomach they used to boil uh, their food in. Uh, uh, the tail of the horse was often used as a, a fly swatter uh, or a riding court. Uh, at one time, the, there were probably 30 to 60 million buffalo on the plains. And when the uh, first wagon train went across on the Oregon Trail, that kind of signaled the demise of the buffalo herds and thereby the demise of the uh, culture, the Native American culture as we know it. The uh, hunters uh, indiscriminately shot uh, uh, the buffalo uh, all year long. A lot of the hides were wasted because they weren't good hides uh, taken during the, their prime. Uh, they, they would shoot the, the buffalo just for the uh, tongue or the hump or the hide and uh, leave the rest of it lay and rot. Uh, at one time uh, at Fort Berthold up here, uh, the uh, trader had 16,000 buffalo tongues that he was trying to get rid of. And, uh, he, the U.S. was in a recession at the time, and he couldn't sell them in the U.S., so he was trying to get a, a way to sell them over in England. But 16,000, that's a lot of them. And uh, one, one group of 16 hunters uh, shot 28,000 buffalo in a short period of time on one of their hunts. Like I said, they used everything except a, a little part of it. They didn't know what it was. The, these are the uh, two uh, pictures of buffalo hunts that uh, were drawn. These were drawn by Tatanka Ota, which is uh, many buffalo, at the request of uh, my great aunt. Uh, this this uh, where is it? this one is, is uh, got an arrow sticking out of it, and obviously uh, mortally wounded. Uh, this one is uh, mortally wounded. You can see it by the blood coming from their mouths. Same way with this one. This, I don't know what it says up here, Dakota something or other, and, but this is a, a drawing showing a buffalo with lots of arrows in it, and I don't know what the hole is here. Look at the, the feet. Uh, they look almost like talons of an eagle instead of the normal buffalo. This one looks better. Again, uh, mortally wounded with the blood coming from it and the calf following it, unfortunately. The, the natives uh, here, uh, this is a Sioux, and this is a, a Lakota, and this is a Lakota. Even though his hair is up, pulled forward, uh, they often wore the hair pulled forward and not in braids or hanging loose. These two are Crow Indians. Uh, he's counting coup on, on one of them with a straight coup stick. This one looks like he's been hit in the back by a, a, a Sioux uh, who's uh, holding a rifle. Maybe he's counting coup on him. Uh, this one has a, a bird for a headdress. And uh, the uh, crow is, is holding some type of a banner uh, of eagle feathers. Talking about counting coup, uh, this is a, a French term. It's uh, where a individual would run up to a enemy and uh, touch him with a, a, a coup stick or a uh, bow or uh, something and get away unharmed. And that was a, a marked sign of bravery. Uh, if he was injured during the uh, uh, encounter, uh, he would be entitled to wear an eagle feather, but it had to be a red one. 
Uh, they counted coup on uh, men, women, even children. Uh, they could count like four coups uh, on uh, an individual. And usually the last one, if the individual was still alive, uh, the, the last one to count coup would dispatch uh, and kill the last one. Uh, it was a very brave uh, uh, encounter. Uh, this is a picture of probably uh, his fight for Oki Sinantawa. He's wearing a special headdress, a uh, society headdress. But he also had a signature red cape that he wore frequently, and a lot of his drawings show that. Uh, the horse has a feather coming off the uh, forehead and a yellow blob of something uh, here and the significance of this is unknown, but it, it probably had some significance. The horse's tail is cropped and tied up in a uh, uh, red, red ribbon. Here are five uh, crows that are shooting at him, and uh, all these are, are bullets uh, flying by, and either they're lousy shots or he dodged them. Uh, another one uh, showing the character's red cape. Uh, he's hanging on to the bridle of uh, his horse and uh, probably uh, doing what they call a challenge uh, run or a bravery run where they would run in front of the uh, line of uh, enemy who are shooting at him and he's unarmed, and uh, if he even makes out alive, that's a, a very brave sign, and uh, probably a feather in his uh, war bonnet. Again, he's got the crescent moon, and his horse's tail is uh, in a bun tied up with a red ribbon. And again, these are crows shooting at him. Here he's in a uh, just a breech cloth, uh, rifle in one hand, and he's counting a coup on a crow, uh, probably a soldier or a crow scout because uh, uh, he's dressed in a military type of uniform. The crow has his pistol in a holster, uh, and he's hit, uh, counting coup with his riding quirt. This was done by Crow Ghost, uh, his name here and his glyph here. Again, three crows shooting at him. The horse is hit twice and fatally. He's got blood coming out of the mouth. And which one is Crow Ghost? Uh, I don't know. Uh, th this is, uh, he's got his hair pulled forward. Uh, could be him. He's holding the saber in one hand. And uh, this one is a uh, holstered pistol, but he's urging the horse on with his uh, riding quirt. The horse isn't going very far, though, with two holes in him and blood coming out of his mouth. The lightning coming down the legs was usually indicated that it was speed and, and power. The horse's tail is uh, different. It's not uh, tied up, but it's... Uh, different than what we usually see. This is uh, his chase, his, his fight. Uh, again, he's in the bushes. He's got 11 crows shooting at him, all missing. And he's firing back with his pistol. He's only in his breech cloth and uh, This is another one. He's counting coup on uh, a crow couple. He's got a straight coup stick uh, compared with a, a curved one, which uh, uh, often looks like a shepherd's crook. He's got a bow in one hand. His horse's tail is tied up in a bun. Uh, th this uh, fellow is a... Uh, belongs to a certain society, 
He's got a straight acoustic, but it's wrapped in fur, uh, usually buffalo or, or otter fur. He's counting coup on the uh, crow. He was dressed in a uh, Hudson Bay type uh, uh, clothing. He's got a bow and arrow. The horse has got a, a scalp hanging from the bridle, so th this horse has trampled somebody. Can't tell whether the horse's ears are notched on this one, though. This is uh, drawn by High Bear. Uh, his glyph is out of here. Uh, a crow has shot the horse in the leg and is throwing uh, probably High Bear over the, uh, the head of it. He's hanging onto his rifle, however. Uh, this is the uh, crow. Uh, Writing court, and uh, it's notched probably because uh, the deeds that he's done in the past and the number of coups he's counted. Uh, how this came out uh, is hard to say. Uh, I imagine uh, High Bear was able to kill the crow because uh, he probably drew this picture of the battle. Uh, Mm -hmm. This is another one done, done by his fight, only he doesn't have the cape on. He's just wearing his uh, breech cloth, firing, shooting the uh, soldier's horse. I, he's counted coup on it with his riding court. The horse is mortally wounded. And uh, the upside down flag uh, apparently was fairly common, uh, commonly displayed in, in drawings by the natives, uh, Plains Indians. And it, the significance is uncertain, but they think it's uh, indicating a loss of power uh, by the individual who uh, carried the flag. Obviously, this loss of power, and he was probably killed by uh, his, his fight. Interesting picture, though. Here, uh, his fight is stealing two horses. Uh, he's pulled the picket pins. He's wearing a hoodie, uh, looks like made out of Hudson Bay material. And he's got a wolf cape over his uh, shoulder. And uh, the significance of this, I, I don't know. Uh, it looks like these are probably scalps uh, from the teepee poles. But, uh, we can see uh, in a later picture they look more like scalps. The, this is a probable uh, bravery run. Uh, paint horse, uh, a society type of a headdress, holding a straight coup stick uh, that is fur wrapped. And he's probably leading the charge. Uh, all these uh, horse, pr horse prints are indicating somebody either chasing him or he's leading uh, his comrades. And he's, I think it's probably uh, that he's leading because these are bullets that are being uh, shot at him. And uh, he's probably running the, the line or the bravery run. This one, it looked like it was a captive, uh, but uh, the more I looked at it, I thought his hands were tied behind him, but uh, this fellow's arm is holding something. So this is probably just a uh, uh, picture of two uh, individuals that are going to a dance or something. He's got a roach headdress and he's dressed up in a lot of finery with a lot of uh, silver uh, uh, discs on him, same way with this one. He's, a, he's got a blue cap on and uh, it's probably a dyed otter, made out of dyed otter fur or uh, buffalo uh, fur. Uh, they did wear caps uh, periodically and, and you see some pictures of the individuals wearing caps. This one is uh, done by Red Kettle. Uh, his hair is pulled forward instead of hanging down or braids. He, uh, this was done in a fight with the crows. No crows are seen, just so they're, they're uh, bullets, uh, a lot of bullets. The horse is dead. 
and uh, threw him over. But he survived. Uh, at least that's what it said on the back of the picture. This is his fight again. And uh, I don't know if uh, you know what a blue roan is. I, I never heard of a blue roan until I, I saw these pictures. But a blue roan is a, a horse that has black stockings or black legs and a black face and a head. Uh, this was uh, his fight uh, saving a comrade. He's got three bullet holes in his cape. He's on a, uh, a bare saddle blanket. Um, he's wearing a choker, and, and the horse has a uh, scalp hanging from it. But uh, a blue roan, uh, I hadn't heard that term used before. Uh, this is uh, done by fire elk. Uh, his horse has got eight holes in him, obviously uh, mortally wounded. Uh, he has a straight coup stick, and this little ball here is, is a little ball of feathers they put on there, and that, the significance of this, I don't know. I couldn't find it. Uh, he's wearing a breastplate. He's been shot twice in the left leg, and there's, Holster, his pistol is still holstered in spite of uh, all this shooting going on. Uh, this is something bare, and I couldn't find the, the, the meaning of this uh, part of the word. Uh, but uh, I think this fellow was uh, killed, and the picture was drawn by a friend or a relative. He's painted uh, up for uh, battle. The uh, glyph is coming out of his mouth, which uh, means that it belongs to th this fellow, and I think that he was killed. He has uh, a hole in, in his chest here and another one here. Uh, he is uh, on a blue roan. Here's the black head, and uh, the four legs are, are black. The tail is tied up in a bun and, uh, with a red ribbon. The, uh, these are soldiers rather than the scouts. They, they're wearing beards. This one shot and missed him completely. Uh, th this one, uh, I thought, hit him, but uh, th this fellow apparently shot him and it went through and maybe came out this side. And, well, but uh, I think th this individual was killed. And I think the picture was drawn by somebody else. Here, his fight is uh, uh, trying to save a, a comrade uh, who's been shot twice. Uh, he, he's uh, got his cape. Uh, but. Uh, They're both, uh, they're both Lakota, Hail, uh, tail is up in a bun. Uh, this one I, I don't know the name of. This one looks like it's a crow with a, a pompadour headdress reaching over trying to uh, capture the Lakota here. Uh, a lot of shooting going on. But he's got a, one of these long sashes. I don't think this is a, a Lakota. I think it's a crow. He's, and he's trying to capture uh, the, the Sioux. Uh, this is a very brave uh, individual with a long headdress. Horse's tail is tied up. He's got a buffalo uh, headdress there. And he's either counting coup and stealing a horse, or a, a, actually more like a mule, I think, because of the ears. But the, uh, 
they would count coup on horses also uh, as they stole them, which uh, provided another feather in the headdress. A scalp from the, uh, from the uh, bridle. Here, uh, his fight is stealing. The, he, a lot of his pictures had him stealing horses. Uh, he's got the hoodie on and, it, and the wolf uh, cape over him. Uh, these look more like uh, uh, scalps hanging from the teepee poles. Here he is again, stealing horses. He's got 11 horses here. This is not a blue roan, though. He's, he's got, uh, I don't think this is saber. I think it's a, a whip uh, by the looks of it. He's got the cape over the uh, shoulder. He's got the hoodie on. Uh, and I'm not certain about what, uh, why, uh, he's got the bustle on here. Some of these look like they're horses, some of them look like they're mules. Washumato is, is a hail bear. Uh, he apparently uh, was injured uh, counting coup on somebody. He's got a, a red feather here. And uh, he was caught stealing these two horses because he's been shot in the hand. And I have no idea what the, this is. On them. It looks like a horse's tail. He's wearing a uh, Hudson Bay type of uh, uh, clothing and a hoodie. But he's in the bushes and not near the uh, the teepees. This is uh, uh, his fight again, showing uh, him stealing horse. Uh, this is acoustic again, uh, with a feather bundle in it. Uh, the horse's ears are notched. Uh, got the uh, crescent moon, the, and the uh, tail is tied up and. What the bird is, I'm not sure whether this represented a thunderbird or a crow. Uh, significance of this, I'm uncertain. Red, long red sash, pro probably of uh, sash wearers. Uh, Rodney Thomas, uh, the, Colonel Rodney Thomas, thought that this was uh, uh, he was he was dressed up as a. Heoka or a uh, clown, but uh, I think this is mostly uh, his outfit of st stealing horses. He's got the, a lightning bolt going down the leg for strength and uh, speed, but uh, I have no idea what this is around his neck. Here again, it's probably uh, his fight, it's his glyph up here anyway. But uh, stealing horses, counting coup on it, feather bundle on this one, and notched ears again. Scalp coming from the bridle. Tail uh, tied up in uh, the uh, crescent moon over the butt and also in the front over the chest. It looks like this is a scarf uh, attached to, uh, over the head and then around the neck. He's carrying his bow. And the sash apparently goes way out here to the end. <coughs> I expected this to go longer, but I think this is my last slide. So. <laughs> If you have questions uh, up for them, I hope that you found this as interesting as I did when I started looking at the pictures. Normally you look, gee, that's a nice picture. But when you look at the detail and uh, know the significance of, the, of what's going on, it really uh, enlightens one. Uh, these are 150 years old or more. Uh, 
and they tell a good story about the culture that we've lost so far. So that's my program. Thank you all for coming. I, I, I hope you weren't bored by it. <laughs>